Go. All right, dash cam footage away. <laughs> How does he, is there a clip there? That's just my phone. And my case is like frictiony enough that it stays. <laughs> I, I rocked the boat quite a bit to test it. <laughs> it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall it, it'll right fall now. in, it won't fall out. Okay. Oh. Driving through the Louvre in a golf cart next to the. Uh, this isn't the Louvre. This is not the Louvre, this is Versailles. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's less people in the Stop. Stop, stop, stop! We're getting on it, sir. Thomas is driving. The Grand Canal is to our right. Okay, go. Voila. And the palace is behind this cart of people to our left. And back to dash cam, because I think it's funny, even if no one ever watches this video. <laughs> <laughs> and we can record Thomas crashing into someone. <laughs> like he almost just did them. <laughs> they were passing. Careful on this hard left, don't ruin my dash cam. I will ruin your dash cam. I don't know, I didn't think we could go that way. We'll find out when they stop in a second. Like that? Yeah, like that. Good to know! <laughs> we were right! He's saying go around. That flyer already? Mm -hmm. We that's the gardens one, yes we have that one. Bonjour, Arriving bonjour. at the Apollo Basin, the view yeah. opens on one side to the Grand Canal. Yeah, cool. and on the other to the yeah, In the foreground, the Allée Royale with its central <laughs> green lawn, some 335 meters long by 64 meters wide, climbs in a gentle slope to the Latona Parterre and is alternatively interspersed with 12 marble vases and 12 statues. Oh, Before the North began ball. work, yeah. a pond with swans already existed on the side of the Apollo Basin, which yeah. kept the original uh, four-leaf form. Jean-Baptiste Tuby sculpted this ensemble in gilded lead between 1668 Bacchus. and 1670. Yes, Apollo, <laughs> the sun <laughs> god, rises from the waves on his chariot just as he rises from the night. The triumphant cortege formed by the horses, the newts, and the sea monsters accompanies Apollo, who seems to be charging to the chateau. Placed along the course of the sun, the Apollo Basin takes full advantage of the morning light. <laughs> the sun god, centrally placed and facing the chateau, is a powerful allegory of Louis XIV, the sun king. All right. That's the Apollo fountain. Going up to the mall, up to the chateau, back to dash cam. It's working out mostly well. <laughs> it only fell once, and I caught it. <laughs> All right, onward. Avanti. Avanti. Uh, you're right here. Up at the right, mall. Right. Oh, is it right here? Right. Are you sure? Yes. No, we don't get to go up the main mall. I suppose that would be obnoxious. The Colonnade Grove and the Salle des Marronniers. The Colonnade Grove, Turn left. built by Mansart in 1684, oh, yeah. Yeah. replaced yeah. Lenotre's old grove of the. On your left, the Colonnade Grove and the Salle des Marronniers. The oh. Colonnade Grove, built by Mansart in 1684, Very thin replaced Lenotre's okay, old go. grove of the sources, consists of a 32 meter round peristyle of 32 marble columns. Some ten years later, Girardon's sculpture of the kidnapping of Dr. Phoenix, the daughter of Ceres and Jupiter, by Pluto, god of the underworld, who became besotted with her when he saw her picking flowers, was installed in the center. This grove was especially used as a venue for concerts, as the decoration in the column's capitals testify. The Salle des Marronniers. The fountain at the first intersection is dedicated to winter, 
represented by Saturn, whose unfurled wings symbolize time. At the next intersection is Autumn, portrayed by Bacchus, whilst the sun is the grapes and surrounded by Saturn. These two mountains are the counterparts of summer and spring, which you saw earlier. We did it? We did? <laughs> No, do you think it's that's the way you here? No, this is kind of up here, the Saturn. He's got wings. And then the one behind, beyond it is Bacchus. I think you start at the front and go that way, and so it's like before, if you started where we were supposed to start, but we didn't go around. Well, yeah, but we didn't start at the, at the chalet. So this is Saturn with his wings. He represents winter. And then when Thomas pulls around to the front, I'll get another picture. Good? No, he's waiting for the tractor to move. Then we get awesome classical music to listen to. Oh look, more ponds. This is going on YouTube. I don't care if three people watch it. <laughs> oh, it'll be on unedited. <laughs> What's this battery doing? Really well. Oh, that's cool. Right, I didn't know that. <laughs> when I'm taking video, my phone goes into do not disturb mode. Oh, okay. That's smart. Yeah, I like that a lot. Unless there's a tornado sound. Uh, or an alarm. For, for some reason, if I have an alarm on, it'll uh, go off. But actually, while we're driving around. Am I, am I driving in a circle? Or no? Yeah, my phone's still at 70%, so I'm not worried about it right now. Yeah, we're still going here. Yeah, because that's the other fountain, the autumn one. The mirror basin on your right oh, is all the remains that. of the old royal island. Having fallen into disrepair during the French Revolution, this ornamental lake was transformed by the architect Dufour in 1817, by order of King Louis XVIII, into a king's garden containing rare and exotic 18. plants. An alley separates this from the mirror basin opposite. On your left, the Girandol Grove, the counterpart to the Grove of the Dolphin, on the other okay. side of the Royal Abbey. Got it. The designs are identical, and were inspired by those of the Chateau of the King's Superintendent, Fouquet. The oh! of the Girandol Grove had the most <laughs> it was going on. Shh. The Trying to record the video, but it's the audio. The first design by Le Nôtre at Versailles. No, the best part of this video it's gonna be that it's gonna just Before feel like turning it. towards the <laughs> there noise. Is the orangerie built by Jules Ardouin Mansart yes, between 1684 and 1686 um, to replace the original smaller orangerie no, by Laveau. During the winter, uh, Mansart's orangerie can house over 1600 uh, lemon trees, pomegranate uh, trees, and orange uh, trees, all without heating. So where's the citrus grove? I guess it's over here. He's going down there. It's the royal alley. Bacchus and all his grapes. Such a great Eden. I think the citrus grove is over here. Do they not have a royal vineyard? There's fish in here. Are there? Yeah. There are fish in there. Hmm, strange. Mm. Okay. Is that a raven? Let's go. Squash the raven. Yes, it is a raven. Straight. Bro. Oh, hang on, I'll map it in a second. I'm gonna put you in the statue. 
actually is pretty cool. Out of the box. Planton. Plato? Platon? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be Plato. Cool. Those are stairs. Those are some stairs. Um, we'll we'll take this straight across all the way until another phone. Okay. Okay. I'll probably on the right. Okay, so this is where we, we cross the mall. Gotcha. Okay, so we have to it's cross like, the it's mall. Like, like that so small. just follow this. Follow this bush line. On this side. Stay on the left side. Follow this crew. Oh, no! <laughs> Where's Ty? I'm going to flip it and it's going to annoy any viewer of this video. I'm taking a 10 minute long video. <laughs> With awesome classical music and terrible gravel noise. You're now <laughs> approaching the Latona Parterre. The Latona Basin and the Lizard Basins are inspired by Ovid's Metamorphosis. Latona, having born Jupiter, two uh, children, stop. Diana and Apollo, is banished by Jupiter's wife, Juno. Latona begs it's Jupiter nice to wreak vengeance on the Lycian peasants who denied her it's and her water. And the, the peasants looks and like Jupiter a, uh, into frogs. Dalek. The marble statue of Latona oh, what? and her children, and the one of the oh, yeah. of lead, was sculpted by the Marcy brothers. Between 1687 and 1689, oh, that's Jude Alduin Marsa transformed the rock on which the statues of Yeah, you don't want to ruin everyone else's photos, though. No, they're the just statues on the slopes of the Parterre are copies of ancient statues, which were made either in Rome or in Paris from Roman casts. I'm gonna get a picture of you two. The great part is, I can take a frame of any of these, of anything in this video and have a picture. So, like, there's my picture of the Louvre. Again, not the Louvre. <laughs> it's been a long couple days. Oh wait, I moved for the second time. <sighs> Sorry, I forgot about the also mirror. Also, blocked the... <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. All right, let's try this way. Okay. I've got video of you taking that photo. <laughs> 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 let's try it with my phone. Yeah, we can do a selfie. And then we'll get it rid of, out of everyone else's pictures. Yes. I'm just going here now. Look, look. Uh, then we'll do the other one. I'm gonna be like, you're too lazy to get out of the car. <laughs> uh, no one asked me to get out of the car. <laughs> All these pictures. Oh god, Thomas is driving. Alright, we ready? No. Oh, Doug's not on the car yet. Doug! It's a really cool fountain over there. Yeah, no. We'll see it later. Yeah, we'll walk up here. Back to dash cam. Holy crap. Doug was not situated? No, Doug was on one foot leaning backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fell off the back. So, reverse subway train, got it. Oh, no! I got it, saved it. We're good. That's cool. A lot of statuary. That looks like he's about to murder that woman. <laughs> no, he's murdering himself to save her? He's got a I gotta need to go look at the caption. It's gone! The caption's gone! Very helpful. Well, oh, and they neutered him. Ooh. That's nice. <coughs> oh, yeah. That was pretty from the outside. Ooh, this is going through battery quickly. That's right. Huh? It's fine. What is it now? It's 63. But, you know, there's a 14-minute video. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry, we're almost done. I think we're more than halfway through. Uh, this guy's got like a lion's tail belt and a giant club, and he's wearing a bear on his head. I like it. Very manly. I like it. Yeah, where's your bear hat? What the fuck? <laughs> what? The hole that eats everyone's tickets, including all of our tickets right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see the Lynch Rodin tickets? Yeah, those are ours. 
So, All right. so tractor rides? No, those are staff. They're groundskeepers. Tractor. Onward! <laughs> yes. Oh no, 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 it's great to YouTube. No, no, this is 100%. I'm uploading this 25 minute video. <laughs> Maybe you should hold it. No, no, it's a dash cam. You can't hold a dash cam. If you're really poor, you can. Alright, so I'm assuming we can't round about this one. Probably not. It didn't work last time. Hopefully it says talking about this fountain that should represent the right. spring. Right, turn right. Right. We go up the hill. Ah. I like go all the way up to the castle. Oh, okay, cool. Are you gonna tell us about this fountain? Uh, it's spring or summer? I don't know. It's one of the four seasons. There's babies and breasts, so it's probably spring. Why do babies and breasts have to be spring? Because that's the season of fertility. There's no men. It's probably spring. So many. Like, what? No, those are these bushes. Square bushes I'm okay with. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really great along the entire perimeter of my yard. Like, what? I can't have more than an 8 foot fence or right, 20 foot edges. <laughs> <laughs> And then they adopt the Doug rule at the City Hall Council. Be <laughs> <laughs> the first time. <laughs> but you'd be grandfathered in. Probably. No, that's not how it works. I think it is. Oh, wait. If they change the code, you're subject to the code. No. It's not a homeowners association. It's an association. It's the city. Avanti. The Pirate's Code! <laughs> yeah, saved it. I'm learning, guys. Hold on. Another golf cart. Ramming speed! Don't ram the golf cart. All basins stand at the intersections of the secondary alleys. They depict the four seasons, which are governed by the sun. The recurring theme of the grounds and chateau, <laughs> and the symbol of Louis XIV. Yeah, please hit all of those the giant statues. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That one. You should hit that one. The first you will also see is summer, and some of the fairies, the goddess of the harvest, <laughs> who is surrounded by ah! cherubs on a ground covered in ears of corn. Further on, Look! at the following intersection, <laughs> is Flora, who incarnates spring. Since it was she who presented Juno with a flower, which had the power to enable her. To if you enter the grove situated on your left, you'll discover yeah, Apollo I'm, I'm, attended I'm by working. nymphs and the horses of the I'm, sun. I'm In a pre-romantic setting designed by Hubert Robert for Louis the Sixteenth and his queen Marie Antoinette. Right. It's quite this group originally stood in the grotto of Thetis, which Louis the Fourteenth had built near the chateau and which was later demolished. Ooh, Christmas trees! Here, one can see the sun god after the hunt being bathed by nymphs while his horses are groomed Ooh. by newts. That sounds fun. Girardon sculpted Apollo and the three nymphs in the foreground, and Renaudin, their three companions. The horses of the sun god were sculpted by Guerin and the Marcy brothers. Okay, so yeah, flower bath of Apollo. I wanna get bathed down by nymphs after my hunt. Sounds great. Suppose in case of breakdown. <laughs> Go. I suppose it would help if I went hunting first. You went hunting once. Oh no, you went shooting once. I've been shooting plenty of times since I've been hunting. Why are you the only one with the map? I told you I don't trust the weather. Ah, God damn it! Why would they put the big speaker right there? Get yeah. on it like twice. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Stop flooring it immediately. <laughs> oh no, a hill! A hill is the enemy. Are we sure this is the way we go? 
jug with something? No, he's getting a picture of the... And a picture of us waiting for Doug. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, there he is. Got it. You can take a picture during the video? Yep. <laughs> it's really cool. I can also pause it and just keep continuing the video later, but that's no fun. And I can go back and watch the video and be like, I want this frame to be a picture. It's probably my favorite button in my video mode. Set. I can take a picture. Oh, yeah, I have that too. I feel like this hill is going to be bad news for my dash cam. <laughs> Considering that. Oh no, not the, avoid the, oh no, you can't avoid that bump. That bump goes all the way across. Right. Come on, King Louie, you couldn't keep your road smooth. They're drainage culverts, obviously. Keeps them from washing out the whole edge Garden. of the road. Mm -hmm. I got your phone. I got you. Oh, thank you for not flooring it over that. The <laughs> oh. had an important role in courtly life at Versailles. From very early on, they were used as venues for parties and outdoor banquets. Intimate places, they were also known as chambers of greenery. During our trip, feel free to stop if you wish to discover their hidden charms. Are you just aiming for the highest point to drop <laughs> off? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. Don't hit the people. I'll hit the people. No, no phone, bad phone. Alright, so from here we go. Oh, we're just going to the other side of the street. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so we go to circle these two ponds and then go back down this hill. Really? Yeah. Okay. Circle these? Yeah. So we're to the right, I'm assuming. Oh, yes. Not through the ponds. I want to go through the ponds. The ponds are pretty cool. Wait, so is that the hall of yours right there? It looks possibly pretty great. Oh, that's an awesome shot. <laughs> well, do you want to be centered at least? No. Ooh, a plane. Ooh, flying way over there. It's one way to do a panorama, I suppose. Yeah, this is a pretty kingly view. I'll give him that. <laughs> Nothing like a hunting lodge. <laughs> I also enjoy that they built a hunting lodge at the hunting lodge. Sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They have okay. a special pass. I'm to walk back up here, so. Yeah. I will try not to take too many more pictures. That's alright. Sideways again to annoy all viewers. Oh look! The military! <laughs> Sir, get the military on video. Yeah, they've just been walking around with famuses, it's fine. It's a holiday weekend in Paris, in France. I get it. Is that that same plane? Oh no, there's a whole bunch of planes over there. It's like uh... It's like three of them circling. Oh yeah. Oh, that makes sense. She's got a star on her head. Oh yeah, they're not, they won't be excited. We're one of five golf carts not stopping here. The laying of the gardens preceded the renovation of the chateau. Le Brun and Le Nôtre combined their talents to depict Louis XIV as the Sun King with the myth of Apollo and the Sun, their central themes. It was Lebrun who established the mythological and allegorical themes of the statues and fountains. Water had a leading role in the gardens, and during the construction of Versailles would be a constant major concern. Le Nôtre arranged the grounds around two perpendicular axes. The first runs north to south alongside the chateau. 
The second, east to west, is 3,200 meters long from the chateau to the gates of the grounds. It follows the course of the sun, enticing the eyes towards a completely open horizon. That's exactly two miles. What? The garden. Uh, from the chateau. You just said 3,200 meters. Oh, I thought it was 1,600 meters. Man, that's cloud. I told you not to rain on my parade. Well, it's not raining. It is. Look at the water. But, I mean, at least it's not those clouds over there. Keep going. Simple. Alright, now we get to hear the start of the tour. <laughs> the groves had an important role. The groves had an important role in courtly life at Versailles. From very early on, they were used as venues for parties and outdoor banquets. Oh. Intimate places, they were also known as chambers of greenery. During our trip, feel free to stop if you wish to discover their hidden charms. What about it? Oh! <laughs> Where are we going? Where did we come from? <laughs> you can do it, Fon. Don't fall. Oh, uh, you're gonna fall. Statues. If you enter the grove situated on your left, you'll discover Apollo attended by nymphs and the horses of the sun. In a pre-romantic setting designed by Hubert Robert for Louis XVI and his queen Marie Antoinette. This group originally stood in the grotto of Thetis, which Louis XIV had built near the chateau and which was later demolished. Here, one can see the sun god after the hunt being bathed by nymphs, while his horses are groomed by newts. Girardot sculpted Apollo and the three nymphs in the foreground, and Renaudin their three companions. The horses are... Four basins stand at the intersections of the secondary alleys. They depict the four seasons, which are governed by the sun, the recurring theme of the grounds and chateau, and the symbol of Louis XIV. Mountain statues are in gilded lead. The first you can see is Summer, personified by Ceres, the goddess of the harvest, who is surrounded by cherubs on a ground covered in ears of corn. Further on, at the following intersection, is Flora, who incarnates spring, since it was she who presented Juno with a flower which had the power to enable her to conceive a child without Jupiter's intervention. I caught it too, but it's like... Oh, no, Thomas, go that way. Not, not into that bush, not into the bush. You'll clear it. Yeah. We started at like the middle third. The grove of the Dauphin on your left was demolished by Louis XVI in 1774 and replaced by simple staggered rows. But it was rebuilt in the year 2000. Already used by the Lord at the Chateau of Beau le Vicomte, the simplicity of the lozenge outlines gives the impression of a maze. This grove, like the Girondel Grove that you'll visit later, follows a plan which the King Superintendent, Nicolas Fouquet, dictated to Poussin. These half-bodied sculptures on elongated plinths were purchased in 1684 by Louis XIV from the son of the disgraced Fouquet. So this is the spring one. Uh, I'll ah. a picture of this one on the right. 
I'm sorry I confused the summer and spring since they're both women surrounded by cherubs. <laughs> Don't hit the stop button. Oh, good. I don't want to mess up my 30 minute video over here. Okay. Ooh, we're getting down to 42% done. <laughs> of Galatia's love for Aces crushed him beneath a rock. A little further on, in a chamber surrounded by a latticework gallery, you can discover the fate of the giant Enceladus, son of Gaia the Earth, slain by Athena during the attack on Mount Olympus in an attempt to dethrone the, the gods. Oh. This grove was restored to the original Le Nôtre uh, design in 1998. Yeah, all in this grove. It looks like he wasn't too far in there. I wouldn't mind walking through that and that. Yeah, cool. You got time. I see a Cyclops and Mount Olympus. Apologies. Apparently this has a 4 gigabyte memory. On one side Which way? To the Grand Canal. Oh no, the yeah. Go around to the chateau. In the foreground, the Allée Royale, with its central green lawns some 335 meters long by 64 meters wide, climbs in a gentle slope to the Latona Parterre, and is alternatively interspersed with 12 it's marble vases and huh? 12 statues. Still the only way we can go. Before Le Nôtre began work, a pond with swans already existed on the site of the Apollo Basin, which kept the original four-leaf form. Jean-Baptiste Tuby sculpted this ensemble in gilded lead between 1668 and 1670. Apollo, the sun god, rises from the waves on his chariot just as he rises from the night. The triumphant cortege formed by the horses, the newts and the sea monsters accompanies Apollo, who seems to be charging to the shuttle. Placed along the course of the sun, the Apollo basin takes full advantage of the morning light. I'm kind of annoyed, because like, on all I needed was two more minutes basin, of this video. The view opens on one side to the Grand Canal, and on the other to the Chateau. In the foreground, uh, the Allée no. Royale, We're going back to central green lawns, some 335 but meters long back that way. by 64 meters wide, climbs in a gentle slope to the Latona Parterre, and is alternatively interspersed with 12 uh, marble like vases and 12 statues. Before Le Nôtre began work, a pond with swans already existed. All right, that finishes the tour of the Louvre. The first side. God damn it! <laughs> you know what? This is going up on YouTube as tour of the Louvre, and someone else gets to figure that out. Oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> anyway, uh, good thing. Oh, uh, this was fun. <laughs> Golf carts are worth it. <laughs> you only almost hit one bush. We did only almost hit one bush. And I only like 12 phone drops. That adds character to the video, though. Some god simply plays. Want to listen to the rest? I'm going to walk up and do the palace. <laughs> Messy. Messy. So, yes, Versailles is the place that we're visiting. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed you can't drive it further out into the garden. It's like, wait, you can take the boats and whatnot. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> Got it. 